Hey everybody, welcome to today's uh, masterclass, Kubernetes masterclass, how to secure production Kubernetes and service mesh workloads on Rancher. Uh, we have the new, new Vector guys with us today. It's gonna be a fantastic presentation. And I wanna let everyone know uh, while you all are joining that, um, and I think I hear some background noise. If you're, you're unmuted, please do mute uh, so we have a nice clean line. Uh, but I do want to let everybody know that uh, the session is being recorded. Uh, we'll go probably about an hour, hour and a half. Uh, if you need to drop off, uh, don't worry about it. We will uh, send you the recording and the slides after the presentation so you don't have to miss a thing. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and jump in. And uh, as a way of introduction, my name is Matthew Shear. I'm marketing manager here at Rancher. I help host these sessions in our intro to Kubernetes and Rancher training sessions on Thursdays. Now, I included my email here so that uh, in case you don't get the recording or you have a follow-up question, uh, you can feel free to ask. Uh, go ahead and email me, Matthew at Rancher.com. Uh, and our presenters, uh, the leaders at uh, New Vector, uh, Henrik and Chip, are you guys on the line? We are indeed. Glad to be here. All right. Fantastic. Well, I'll, I'll let them do a, a further uh, introduction, but needless to say, they're they're experts in this uh, field and have been working on uh, Kubernetes security and security in general for years. I was really looking forward to their presentation. I had a, a sneak peek earlier, and it's just going to be awesome. Uh, so without further ado, let's keep going. Uh, so just some housekeeping rules before we really dive in. Uh, as I said, we'll go you know, about an hour. I think the presentation will take about 40, 45 minutes, and we, we try to keep plenty of time to answer your questions. So please do ask and ask early and often. You can put your questions uh, directly in the chat and then mark them in as uh, private if you uh, don't want them read aloud or don't want them answered for the benefit of all for whatever reason. Uh, otherwise, we'll, we'll use your question uh, as, a, as a teaching point uh, so everyone can benefit. Uh, this session, as I mentioned, is recorded. So are our other training sessions. You can uh, go to youtube.com uh, slash C slash Rancher, uh, and you will find all of uh, these sessions, our meetups, uh, and other material, tons of training material there. It's totally free uh, to use for your uh, educational journey. Uh, and if you want to get more connected to our community, uh, awesome uh, open source community, slack.rancher.io, uh, it's totally free to join. Thousands of members on uh, the Rancher Slack, hundreds of people asking and answering questions daily. Uh, and this uh, series, the Masterclass, has its own channel, uh, Pound Masterclass, to join that. So we often post uh, these recordings, uh, the files, uh, any other kind of follow-up and announcements there uh, as well. Uh, and this session uh, is part of a bigger series. We, we have these Masterclasses almost every week, two, or three, four times a month. Uh, so we have some really great sessions coming up on uh, Kubernetes monitoring and uh, observing, getting insight into your clusters, um, great stuff on uh, storage, persistent storage in Kubernetes, and Shang Yang, one of our principal engineers, uh, will be talking about that, and, and Project Longhorn, which will go beta later this year, uh, and also on um, uh, recovery, uh, database recovery uh, with Rancher. So uh, stay tuned for those. You can join as many of these as you want. It's totally free to join. Uh, and so with that, with all of that out of the way, we can finally get into the really interesting stuff, the reason you all joined. Uh, so I'm going to pass this presentation over to Henrik uh, so yeah. you can get us going. So I'm making you the presenter. All right. I am showing my screen, I hope. Yeah, I just I don't quite. Yeah, there we go. I see it now. There we go. Perfect. Good. We're good to go. So glad to be here. Thanks, Matt, for uh, for inviting us. I'm I'm here with uh, with Chip and Young from uh, from New Vector, and um, I've got the easy part here because I'm just gonna you know tee this up and then hand it over to uh, to Chip, who's gonna run through some um, exciting uh, attack scenarios uh, where we where we show sort of real life attacks and on a Kubernetes um, environment. Um, of course, you know as as you've all seen, um, you know containers have become quite the attractive um, you know, environment to attack from uh, for, for hackers. It's it's fairly easy because it's it's new. There are new people, there are new procedures, there are new environments, and so you know there are these sort of the obvious blunders, and then there are the more sophisticated attacks. And, and we're gonna we're gonna cover it all from uh, from from A to uh, A to C. If um, if you look at what customers and and sort of DevOps teams are are doing. Um, 
today. Um, most people have implemented some sort of um, image scanning, registry scanning, signing, uh, you know, solution, and and are sort of embedding that into the into the DevOps uh, practices. But really, when it when it comes to protecting your environment at, at runtime, it takes a lot more than than image scanning. Um, you know, you you gotta you gotta make sure that you know you have proper host-based security in place, you have access controls, you you lock down your your uh, manager and orchestration environment, and and uh, you know people are starting to put in network policies and and uh, and 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 other sort of means of of segregating the uh, the network. But but really. Um, you know, for you know, if you want to if you want to protect yourself uh, for real network attacks and and for hackers trying to get into your system, there's no there's no other way than implementing a proper uh, layer seven network security solution, and also you know add on sort of real runtime security, so process monitoring, file monitoring. But but you know this this is all about trying to keep the hacker out, not to you know, keep your your images uh, clean of, of 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 vulnerabilities. So, so when we talk about runtime security, what what do we really mean? You know, there's a there's a whole bunch of things that you can do while you you build your container and you ship it, and you know, we'll show that as well. But for runtime security specifically, you know, we're talking about identifying vulnerability exploits in the container, of course, suspicious processes unauthorized file system activity and on the host side it's like for instance privilege um escalation and and uh, you know orchestration attacks but on the on the sort of the, the runtime side and on the network um what we see is is of course you know sort of traditional attacks but attacks in that now occur you know on the east west traffic as well as the north south traffic in in kubernetes so we see you know uh you know lateral movements of, of attacks we see you know, there's DDoS attacks, there's tunneling, um, you know, there's, you know, you see crypto mining being, um, you know, installed here and there. So there's a bunch of stuff that you gotta, you gotta look out for. And that's really what, what New Vector does. Just as a, you know, sort of a, a very brief introduction to New Vector's um, Kubernetes platform. You know, we, um, we deploy um, as a, as a, as a, as a node in, in, uh, I'm oh, sorry, a pod in, in, um, in, in Kubernetes, and you will manage the new vector pod alongside any other uh, pod that you're running on, on Kubernetes. We, um, we, uh, we require one pod per, uh, per, um, per host. And you know, we, we run as a daemon set and we run without full privileges. So, so that's, a, that's an easy way to, to get started. Immediately after you, uh, you, you, know, you implement us, we will start looking at uh, you know, both your network, your containers, and, and, and your host, all three. Um, so the first thing, of course, we offer is, is, is scanning. And, and uh, you know, Chip will, will show us how we have um, embedded that into Jenkins, if you like. Um, and also, we'll show you registry scanning and, and CIS benchmark scanning, as well as the integration to Kubernetes admission control. And then on the on the runtime side, we we automatically learn through behavioral learning the the, the network um, you know patterns, and then we lock those down into sort of a container micro segmentation, um, and we'll we'll either report or prevent all unauthorized network connectivity between the containers and, and in and out of your Kubernetes environment. Uh, we also monitor process and, and files along the way for suspicious processes and suspicious, suspicious you know file uh, system activity. And then you know the the real sort of strength of the of the vector solution is the the sort of the the, the proper layer seven network based security. So we do deep packet inspection. We've just announced that we're doing um, you know DLP, so data leakage prevention as well. So we can look for uh, data in your in your packages like you know social security numbers or or, or uh, credit card numbers etc. And then finally, Chip will also show. Um, how we're adding a security mesh on top of, uh, of service meshes such as uh, Istio and, uh, and Submariner and, and, uh, and Linkerd. Um, on the response side, you know, we take automated response, which is what makes us different from monitoring tools, for instance. So we're actually trying to prevent stuff from happening, not just reporting on it. Um, we will automatically, you know, capture packets in your network so you can do forensics on it later. 
um, and we will shove it all in the sim tool through you know syslog and and also in in uh, in real time give you web hooks um, you know uh, notifications that something is 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 going wrong. So let me just uh, tee up the um, the demo then the, that that Chib is um, is going to do here. So you know I started off doing a, a brief um, introduction to the network uh, or the net, new vector Kubernetes security platform, and um, actually the the second agenda item here is um, the fact that you will be able to deploy new vector directly from the Ranger catalog very very soon. We we tried to get the merge done last night. Um, I don't think it has occurred yet. It might actually be ready by the time that we get um, out of the webinar. So go ahead, check out the Ranger catalog, search for new vector, and you will be able to pull us directly from there. Um, Chip will be showing you know CI/CD integration with Jenkins and Cloudbees. We're going to show image scanning and integrated Kubernetes um, admission control. Network um, security and, and Chip is going to run through our, our real life attack demo and show how a, a sort of a layer seven firewall can help blocking that. I'm um, going to show process and file violations and then um, you know adding the security mesh to the service mesh on, on top of that. Um, so with that, Chip, I'm going to uh, ask Matt actually to <laughs> hand <laughs> hand over the uh, the screen controls to you and. Cool. Sounds good. Hopefully the demo got will be with us. <laughs> That's right. All right. I'm making you the presenter, Chip. Okay, cool. Awesome. Okay. So and I just want to make sure uh, everybody see my screen okay? I see it. Looking oh, good. cool. So what I'm showing you right now is the new vector UI. And as Henry mentioned earlier, we deployed directly into cluster itself. So we're 100% on premise. A little background about my demo environment right now. It is Rancher that's actually managing a GKE cluster at the moment. Now, when we deploy to any Kubernetes cluster, we do deploy two separate services. The first of which we deploy is what we call controllers. Think about the controller as the brain to the new vector platform. It essentially pushes out the policies, receive all the security events, and even the web UI you're looking at right now is being presented by the controllers. When we deploy the controllers, it's always a minimum of three. They're all active at the same time, and they're all sync. If one controller is to fail, a new one will be spawned up to take its place. So as you can see there, it's definitely highly redundant. Now, the second component we deploy is what we call the enforcers. And the enforcer essentially think of it as think of it as doing the heavy lifting with your environment. It does a detection of violations, enforcement policies. Every single node within a cluster required to have one of these. And from a Kubernetes perspective, they deploy at the daemon set. That way, every node is guaranteed to have one. You add a new node. Essentially, one of these will be added as well. Now, let me just jump directly into the meat of this particular demo. So, as as a uh, our basically cover entire CIC pipeline from a security perspective. So typically when you deploy into any environment, the first thing you want to do is be able to scan your builds. And New Vector does have a Jenkins plugin. So for example, in this case, what I'm showing you is a pipeline I have. And what I did in this case using Jenkins plugin from New Vector, I'm added as part of my, um, my, my pipeline in this case. So the final step in this case is using New Vector to be able to scan the images to make sure there is no vulnerability within it, and we can create policies around it. So in this particular example, you see that Jink, this particular build has been filled by New Vector. Now, if I dig a little bit deeper here, we do provide you with a New Vector report. And essentially what this report is showing you is everything that we have detected that have every vulnerability we detected from this particular build. And as you can see here, it lists all the different CVEs. It provides a link to how information would be very useful for developers to see how they can go about um, fixing their builds. Now, the next phase, typically after your build, you want to be able to put your image into registry. Now, with New Vector, we can, with New Vector, what we can do, we can also scan your registry images as well. And essentially, we can, we can scan any registry environment as long as we have access to, whether it's local, private, and we work with all the major uh, registry vendors out there, Docker, uh, ECR, anything with, with Azure. Okay. 
I th yeah, I think that the screen's taking a little longer to update at the moment. So here's the, essentially here, I went ahead and integrated a new vector with my Docker registry, and I'm able to scan all my different images within it. Now, once the image has been scanned, essentially new vector will provide a report from a CV perspective of the image itself. Any CVs we detect in this case, we will provide you a link that talks about how to go about mitigating these, uh, these vulnerabilities here. But let's say somehow during the scanning phase, something got through your build, something got through the scan and registry, it's being deployed directly in cluster itself. Anytime a new container is deployed into an environment, new vector will scan that container for vulnerabilities. If you haven't modified that particular container in runtime, we will rescan again, just to make sure no new vulnerabilities have been added. So in addition to scanning the container, we scan the nodes as well. We also look for malicious processes, since it follows some access, as well as privilege escalation. So these are things that we look on the node as well as container itself. In addition, we'll scan the platform, in this case it's Kubernetes Rancher, just to make sure there's no vulnerability there as well. So from a bench, from a compliance perspective, we will scan both the node and container using CF benchmark, just to make sure they're configured properly from a security perspective. And most recently, we included emission control as part of one of features. And essentially with emission control is direct integration with Kubernetes itself. It makes new vector essentially a gatekeeper for any images that can deploy with your environment. I just got the CIS benchmark screen, by the way. So okay. yeah, we'll give me... the uh, Kubernetes admission <laughs> control that sure, no a second and it will update. Okay, yeah. sounds good. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I hope you're That's it. awesome. So with the mission control, essentially you can start creating policies. For example, in this case, I have a couple of policies created here. One is indicating if a particular image has more than three high severity CV, make sure it does not get deployed to a cluster. You can also create policies such as if an image is configured improperly, maybe it has too many there, you can definitely keep that from being deployed as well. So Take this particular um, rule that's created an example. Any image in more than high, high level CVs gets rejected. So if I go to my registry scan, first of all, I can look at all the different images in the scan and I can create policy as, associated with them. So in this case, for example, I have a particular image here. As you can see, there's definitely a lot more than three high-level CVEs. Now, if I go to my Kubernetes engine in this case, and if I try to deploy it, you'll see that this particular image was actually rejected. Now, if I go back to my new vector screen, I can see exactly why that particular image was re rejected in this case. It gives me essentially because of a rule saying that anything with more than high, three high level CVEs, make sure it's not going to play with your environment. Okay. Now, in addition from a scanning perspective, New Vector really focus, focuses on the runtime aspect of, of your, of your of security with your microservice environment. Now, what I'm showing you right now is a network activity screen. It shows all the network tech activity within your environment, how each service is actually connecting to each other. On the left-hand side, this is actually control traffic Kubernetes. And as you can see here, even with the, the small cluster, there's a lot of management traffic that goes around it. And New Vector is the only platform that can actually um, monitor these and protect these management connections as well. But for today's uh, demo, I'm really focused on applications that would deploy directly in cluster itself. And that's what I have on the right-hand side, a very simple three-tier application, Nginx as my web tier, I have Node.js in my application, and I'm using Redis as my database. Now, anytime you deploy a new application, new vector protected cluster, 
we go through what we call a discovery phase. And the purpose of discovery phase is really to be able to understand everything about the application itself in terms of what network connections required, what process runs so we can understand, so we can get the baseline of it. So since I have access to a particular cluster, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually run some traffic within the application. That way you can see how new vector uh, behavior in real time. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it's taking a little time for me to refresh. I see the same screen. Okay. As before, but it hasn't refreshed yet. Okay, no. So, okay. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So as traffic traverses the application, first of all, you'll see then what new vector is doing. It's really mapping it out. It shows how each service talk to each other and what protocols use. But more importantly, what we're doing in the background, we're actually creating these whitelist rules as part of baseline. So for example, in this case, we're showing between these services, they're communicating using the Redis protocol. And the way that we discover is Redis protocol is not based on port number, we're using deep packet inspection. So we know with 100% certainty what that protocol is. And let's say if you happen to use custom ports for your application itself, new vector will be able to detect that and essentially uh, create the correct rules for them. So one question that comes up quite often is, let's say during the discovery phase, what happens if the malicious traffic, how does new vector respond to that? So let me just go ahead and just demonstrate that for you. So in this case, between the these two services, a new network connection has been generated. And as you can see here, there's an alert here, it's red. The reason is because malicious in this case. Now, on a very high level, it shows you they're communicating using the ICP protocol. But if I dig a little bit deeper here, it tells me why new vector thinks it's malicious. In this case, it detected the ping death attack, a well-known denial of service, though it does not create a rule for it. What it does instead in this case actually create what's called a security event. The network is a little funky here. Um, perhaps while we're, we're waiting for this to uh, to update, I can uh, I can take a couple of questions actually from the uh, from the audience. So uh, we've got one guy here asking um, if there is if in, if New Vector has integration to Bamboo. Yeah, so in terms of our integration, um, one thing about New Vector, it is 100% API driven. So essentially, you can, with some customer scripting, we can definitely integrate with any third party tools out there. We're sharing the security event right now, All right? I'm just waiting for my screen to update here. Is still loading the security events oh, at the okay. moment. Uh, okay. Network's a little. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll get back to security events. So. Oh, there it is. Okay. Well, there we go. Network rules. You can see them. Yeah. So, what I'm going to show you now is actually network rules. And these are rules that are only generated based on the traffic that just flow through the application. Uh -huh. 
And the way we create the rules is not based on IP address port numbers. It's actually done from service to service and on the application layer, layer. As you know, with container, they are ephemerals. They come and go. Their IP address was changed. So by applying these rules to the services, when new containers added, these rules will be automatically applied to containers as well. Now, the next phase to when these rules are created is really be able to examine them, make sure these are the right rules for environment. If you see anything that does not belong there, you can simply go ahead and delete them. But if you see any rules that have not been automatically created, or you need to create some custom rules, we allow you to do that as well. Very flexible. When it comes to creating your own rules, you can use IP addresses, port numbers, domain names, or any metadata that you get from Kubernetes or the runtime, container, I mean, um, Docker, or, or any other runtime you're using in this case. Now, in addition to what we do from a uh, network perspective, baselining it, we also do it from a process perspective as well. We're we waiting for the screen to update. Yeah. <laughs> So just the same thing we do from network perspective, we create a baseline for all the processes as well. And just like from network, network rules perspective, once the process rules are generated, you can definitely modify as necessary. Anything that does not belong there, simply go ahead and delete it. Awesome. So what I'm showing you here on the left-hand side, for this particular service, service, this is all the process that's automatically detected in this case. Now, if you see anything here that's been lost, simply delete it. For example, in this case, like this shell is something that has been automatically detected as a window process. So in, in the actual production environment, you should never allow shell to run because essentially it opened the back door to, for access containers. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this particular rule. So now with all the information we gather from a network perspective, in a process perspective, the next step is really to be able to lock down environments. Now, when we lock it down, we do provide two separate modes. We have what's called monitor, and we also have protect. With monitor mode, we're essentially, with new vector detect anything that's malicious or some violation, we simply let you know about it. We create an alert in this case. Whereas in protect mode, new vector is actually sitting in line in front of all traffic. Any malicious connections, any violations, will actually drop those connections. But anything that we have a whitelist rule, rule for that we learned about previously, we'll still let it go across. That way it does not affect your application. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna put this particular uh, service into monitor mode. Now, if I go back to the number of activity screens, one thing you'll notice is that this particular service is now purple. So this is indicating this is now in monitor mode. But if you look at the rest of my service, they're still in the discovery phase. And the reason for this is because new vector gives it flexibility to determine how each service needs to be protected. Some are in monitor, others protect, while newly deployed applications can still be in the discovery phase. Now, when we do in the background, I'm going to go ahead and actually move the rest of my services into the monitor mode. And just a little background information, so everything I'm doing here from a web UI perspective can also be done using our CLI as well as our API. So we can make them very flexible in how you want to go about automating your environment. So I'm just waiting for my screen to update. Okay. So in addition, so in addition to moving my um, my service into monitor mode, I also generate some traffic that previously did not have a rule for, it, as indicated here. Now, if I click on it, it shows you that between these services, they're trying to communicate on a random TCP protocol uh, along with the Redis application. And because I don't have a rule in place as part of my baseline, 
essentially alert is created. But let's say, for example, between two services, such as, I, as such I'm showing here, I do have a whitelist rule in place. I'm allowing the ATP protocol to go across. But even though a whitelist rule in place, new vector is constantly using deep packet inspection to make sure there's no embedded attack. So in this case, in the background, I went ahead and generated an attack within this whitelist with a particular session. As you can see here, what was once blue traffic, there's alert going across now. Now, if I dig a little bit deeper here, it tells me exactly why new vector seems malicious. In this case, it looked like somebody has tampered with the HTTP header. So, in addition to work to working with just uh, new vector can also work with any traffic that's part of a service mesh. As you know, with a service mesh perspective, there are some security features such as authentication. Once authentication is enabled all traffic on the wire between pod is 100% encrypted. But even though that's the case, new vector can still look at the traffic clear text and do things such as segmentation application alert and still do, do deep packet inspection. And the reason for this is really the architecture of hub service mesh. With the service mesh, you always have a proxy within the pod. All application traffic needs to flow through the proxy. Now, when the traffic flows between, I don't see it yet. It has enough. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yep. When the traffic flow between the pods in the case is 100% encrypted, but when the proxy sends a communication back to the application container, it uses a default loopback interface. And where new vector can tap into traffic, it can look at the loopback, loopback connection and be able to look at the traffic in clear text. And because of that, and they can not only do segmentation and application layer on it, they can also do deep packet inspection. So in the sense of best of both world, encryption on the wire, we still have the ability to do deep packet inspection. Now, in addition to what, what I mentioned previously in terms of what new, new vector can do from a monitor perspective, from a uh, protect perspective, it can also do what we call response rules. And what the response to essentially is doing is giving, taking the ability to create a customized response for any type of threats or violations within the environment. Now, in this particular example I have here, Okay, cool, awesome. So, awesome. So a response was really a way to be able to customize the type of reaction you want for different type of threats for violence environment. So for example, in this case, let's say if you take a malicious processing container, you can do setting as quarantine. And what quarantine does essentially is isolate up the container from the network. We don't let any connections in and out, preserve it. We still, it's still alive in this case and accessible with the Kubernetes API. So you can pull for rent information from it, such as the process history, the command line history, so you can understand exactly how that attack took place. You can also send out a customized webhook, and this is really a way to integrate with third-party tools, such as your SIM, your cert ticket creation system. Now, you can also use a webhook in conjunction with the API to do such thing as taking full length network capture so you can see how the attack took place from a network perspective. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually activate this particular response rule. Now, if we go back to network activity page, you'll notice that new vector has detected two more attacks in this case. First of all, it's a MySQL attack. In this case, a SQL injection. As part of my audit response, I took a packet capture in this case, as you can see here, it's still running at the moment. 
So new vector can be defi defined to, when you see anything malicious, take the full network capture. Now, when this capture is taken, you can download it and eventually um, examine it using Wireshark or any other network monitoring tool. So in addition to this, no, uh, new vector can also do what we call quarantine, and this can be done automa automatically through a detection of a process or some or bodily threats, or it can do manually as well. And essentially, with quarantine, it does take the, the uh, it does take a container off the network, but you can still access this with uh, with Kubernetes API to really understand how the attack took place and pull forensic information from it. Okay, so. This essentially takes us back to the, uh, to the dashboard in this case. And with the dashboard essentially give an overall view from a security perspective of the health of your cluster, we take into account such thing as the ingress, egress traffic, and whether they're protected or not. We also look at different vulnerability within the cluster itself, and based on information collected, we give you an overall, uh, overall score. Now, once the score is given, we can guide you through how to mitigate the different vulnerability and threats so you can get a much better security posture for your cluster itself. Okay. Okay. So in terms of information we gather in this case, we have um, security events. Uh, one thing I was trying to show earlier with the security event, anytime we detect the threats, what we do here is we all might take a packet capture. So earlier on in this particular demo, we showed a ping death attack. So as part of our autumn response, first of all, we do take a packet capture. So what I'm showing you here is essentially the packet that has a signature that indicates this is the uh, ping death attack. This is for forensic analysis, as well as proof there was attack with your environment. So all this information with security events, which essentially is anything that happens in a cluster, can't be exported via syslog or a customizable webhook. All right, I think we're nearing the uh, the end of um, of the demo here, guys. So if you have uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and uh, and use the uh, the go to webinar. Um, you know, questions box to uh, to ask any any questions, and, and we'll be happy uh, happy to uh, to answer them. Yeah. Uh, we also have risk reports, um, and essentially, what risk risk reports are is basically a everything that happens on the platform itself from previous perspective. All the information is logged with some risk reports, and with event it essentially provides an audit trail for everything within the Kubernetes cluster as well as the new vector platform. And again, all the information being exported via syslog or customizable webhooks. Okay, I got, um, I got one question here, which is, um, what is it to, the difference between new vector and log? So happy, uh, happy to answer that, right? So, um, you know, we, we come at this from a, from a very sort of runtime centric perspective. We, we, we start with the network and make sure that any traffic in and out of your Kubernetes cluster is, is being protected. Um, as, as well as all the east-west traffic. And we also um, do a good job of, of, of protecting the, the container itself at, at runtime. So we're looking at processes and, 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 and file system events. Um, you know, Twistlog and, and Aqua are, are coming at this, you know, primarily from a, from a scanning uh, perspective and making sure that they, they clean up the, the CVEs during the, the DevOps process. And, and our, you know, as you can tell, we, we do that as well, but our fundamental belief is that you need a lot more than a, a clean container to be uh, protected at, at runtime. So, so that's sort of the, the high level differentiation between us and, and Tesla. Any, any other questions? How Do we have any integrations into uh, AKS? Definitely. So uh, in terms of AKS, um, we, we work right out of the box with it. Um, essentially, just like any other Kubernetes, we deploy as a 
essentially deployment for the controllers and a daemon set for um, for the enforcers in this case. So we do work right out of the box with AKS. Okay, so there's another good question here. It's like, how long is the time frame um, for the discovery and learning learning uh, mode? It's pretty much automatic. So once you deploy our enforcer into a node, we do discover all the different containers within it. We look at all the processes and that discovery is pretty much automatic. From a network connection process perspective, we learn as we as new process, new connections going through the application. Okay. So the one here is like we want to use Nexus for our registry. Is that is that supported? Yeah, definitely. So um, I did not show this earlier, but essentially Nexus is definitely the one that the um, registry work right out of the box with. Okay. One here, which is uh, what is New Vector's pricing? So essentially, our list price is uh, is a hundred dollars per um, per host per per month. And. When you're scanning for container registries and images, or are you looking for OS vulnerabilities? Definitely. So we look at OS vulnerabilities. We look at things uh, from a library perspective. We look at things from um, basically modules or languages, Ruby, Python. Um, essentially, we we scan across the board. Okay, cool. And here's one other one. Is like, if I'm running as a shared service, I want the dev team to only see the the services that uh, that belong to them. Awesome, we can definitely do that. So typically, uh, when you do multi instancing you isolate uh, services based on namespace. So we can definitely create usernames um, that have only access to certain namespaces. Um, and once you do that, essentially, they can only make configurations there. They can only look at resources within their own namespace. Okay, what is the performance impact of the cluster? Actually, very uh, little uh, impact there. Um, we do have two for two different modes we, we spoke about earlier one's monitor and one is protect the monitor mode is essentially where it's never tapped so there's really not a lot of uh additional resources or latency added to any of the traffic uh in protect mode because we do sit in line of all traffic um but from a latency perspective we add anywhere from two to five percent additional latency so very little there from a resource perspective uh each container we deploy on the node it requires 500 megabytes of memory and one virtual share space, so as you can see, is a very uh, light footprint. And the size, the size of it itself is only about 70 megabytes. Cool. Another question here, which is, what is, uh, how are you different from Synopsys? And I, I assume with Synopsys, you mean uh, Black Duck. Um, in fact, we are, we're, we're very complementary to Black Duck. We, we have actually an integration to Black Duck where we allow them to do the image scanning and the source code scanning, and they sign the image and we look for that uh, signature and will only allow to run uh, those particular containers that have been uh, signed off by, uh, by, by Black Duck and Synopsys. So um, in, in almost entirely uh, complementary. Uh, 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 how much overhead? We've already asked that. How does update oh yeah how does new vector update our attack signatures yeah definitely so um, because we do run in kubernetes you can simply just run a kubernetes job in this case that would would, would basically um, scan our database for anything new added uh, so that's one way to do it automatically but of course in certain environments where it's air gap you can definitely you know run a cron to, to download it and then manually up, uh, upload the new vector uh, but the easiest way just to run a kubernetes job okay Another question here, which is, is an on-premise setup available? Which I assume is like, can you run this on-premise as opposed to um, in the cloud? I assume that um, the person here means, uh, are we running a SaaS solution, which we're right. not, right? Yeah. It's, so, yeah. It's 100% on-premise. Um, yeah, so even for air gap environment, make it very simple to deploy. We don't have, we don't have any SaaS solution. And when we mean on-premise, essentially we can work basically from the deploy with your data center. Uh, but if you run like EKS, GKE, we can support that as well. Can we manage uh, multiple clusters through one uh, new vector instance? Yeah, definitely. So right now, the way it's deployed is a single instance of new vector per cluster. But in our next release coming out next month, essentially we will introduce multi-cluster support. So a single pane of class to manage all the all your clusters within your environment. Okay. Do we support Dogger Swarm? Definitely. So I know we talk a lot about Kubernetes, but in terms of orchestrator, we support it all. Was a swarm method we support it? Okay. 
that is the end of the many questions we got here. So appreciate all the engagement. Um, Matt, do you want to go ahead and, uh, and wrap up? Yeah, fantastic work, guys. And thanks, everybody, for your questions. Um, a couple of people asked if the session was being recorded. And um, if you didn't hear it, it, it is. It absolutely is. So we will send out uh, the recording and the uh, slides after the presentation. I'm just going to take the um, presentation back from you, Chip, and just show this final slide so that people can see um, the uh, thank you. Let's see, make sure you see the right URL. So yeah, so um, if you want to sign up for, for other training sessions, just go to the URL listed rancher.com uh, slash Kubernetes masterclass. Um, you'll be able to see all of our other training. Give us a shout out on Twitter. You know, let us know how the session went for you. We also have uh, a survey uh, when you exit at the end of the session. Uh, it just takes two minutes to fill out and it helps us know what we did well, what you want to see more of, what other topics you want to hear about. Um, and so if you're able to do that, you know, it makes uh, these trainings uh, better and more useful to you all. Uh, and, and Henrik and Chip, fantastic job. Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate and it. Thanks for, thanks for the invite, man. All right, everybody. Talk to you all soon. All right. Bye. Thank you.